Hi, this is Sean Wildermuth. Welcome to Coding Shorts. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about Veep projects and integrating them with ASP.NET. Now, I've talked about other ways of integrating Vue and Angular and other things into ASP.NET projects, but a lot of these are moving towards V as a development time tool and having a way that you can both use it intrinsically in your ASP.NET projects as well as making it work for production. That's what we're going to talk about today. I did want to mention at the end of this video, I'm going to be talking about a new class I'm going to be teaching here in Atlanta at the end of March. If you're interested in this sort of content, you might be interested in the class. But let's get started. So I'm in Visual Studio Code, though everything I'm going to talk about should work just as well in Visual Studio itself. So it kind of doesn't matter which approach you go. And I've got a pretty simple project here. It just has a couple of razor pages, though again, how you're handling views, whether you're doing it with MVC or razor pages, it doesn't really matter for this approach. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use a console and I'm just going to come in here and say .NET watch. So it goes ahead and builds my project. And as I make changes, it'll just rebuild it if it needs to, or it'll hot swap it if it wants to. We're not going to be doing any actual debugging here. And what you'll notice is I have a page called film list and I want my spa, my, in this case, a view project that's using Veet to be hosted on this page. Now this approach is a little different if you're building a full giant spa and you're just using ASP.NET Core for your API. In that case, you don't need to do some of the tricks I'm going to show you. You're simply going to point it at an index.html, which is the home and just have it call APIs in that same project. But instead, what we really want is we'd like to have this view project actually run. So let's open up a new terminal. I'm going to go in our client directory here, and I'm just going to tell it to run dev. And run dev, in our case, is just calling Vite, and Vite is exposing uh, an index HTML for our project directly on this URL. And so there we have a fairly ugly, but a usable version of our project. And notice it has a couple of pages, a film list and home. And what's interesting is this film list is actually calling this ASP.NET project. That's how it's getting this film list. I'm exposing an API there, but we'd like to get them to work together. So now that we see how they work, let's see what we can do. So if we go over to the client, I'm going to open up the vite.config and I want to make a change here. This configuration doesn't have much in it. What we do want to do is say that when we do build, what do we want to do? We want to tell it to put it in an out directory. And instead of it being the dist folder, as it normally would inside of a vite project, we're going to say go down one level and let's put it in www root and I'll say a client folder. I also want to tell it to empty this out directory every time so we don't have extra files from different builds. But this change is not going to affect our runtime because Veet, in this case, is just running and serving up the files directly, right? And so we're not going to magically get a client folder here in WW root. So all we've done is really allow that when we do npm run build that we're going to get those files on the right directory. In fact, let's stop V for a second and we're going to sort of back into this. So if I go ahead and build this, you'll see that over here in WW root now, we have a client folder that includes the different things we need. And so how are we going to pull these in? Let's go ahead and open up our page for film list. And you notice we don't have a lot here. We don't have any backing. I just want to have a page that's going to host this. And so I'm going to have a div and I'm going to call it app and I'm calling it app because if we look at the client and it's main.js is it's mounting it to a named element called app. We could change this name, but I'm going to leave it as is. So this is where I want the view project to live. So what do I want to do here? I need to bring in these dependencies, right? 
both the CSS and the JavaScript. Nothing else really, but just those two. So on my layout, like it is pretty common to see, we're gonna see a section called styles and a section called scripts. And so we're gonna just use that section styles. And here we're just gonna do a link CSS. In this case, we're gonna use the, the path to our WW root folder, right? So we're gonna say client assets. And we could put index.0105.0.0, right? We could put in this specific file, but every time we build, this is gonna be a little different. So we can actually say asp.href-include. And when we say that, we can actually just use wildcards to include our CSS that happens to have this special name. And we can repeat this with scripts. Script, instead of just a source tag here, we're gonna actually say ASP include client assets index dash star dot js. And because we're watching it here, we should just be able to go over and see that we now have the project. Notice the view logo isn't loading correctly, but I'm not that worried about it now. And when I go to films, I'm still getting those films. So it's here in that page. But remember, this is based on a build. So there is a solution out there that is supposed to work. You're supposed to be able to say .NET add package Microsoft ASP.NET Core dot spa services dot extensions, right? This is a package that works and allows us to do some of these special things. Problem is that it's really badly documented. There are some spa services that are older and deprecated, and so we shouldn't be using them anymore. And the replacement is this Microsoft ASP.NET Core spa services dot extensions, but it's not well documented either. And so to change this, I'm just gonna add environment include production. So we're gonna use these when we're in production, but we're also going to say include development. And what are we gonna do in development instead? We're gonna actually use Vite in the way we expect it, right? And the way that works, if you look at the HTML that's here, they're actually pointing themselves at the main JS in the source directory, and they're using this type module. Now Vite does this so that it can load things as needed and as changes happen in a really clever way. So we're gonna mimic this. We're gonna say script type equals module, source equals, Wait, what does source equal? Because we can't really go to this client folder, but what we can do is say 5,000 because we're running the Vite server, source main.js. So you might not see this change, but let's make it change. Let's go back to our app.view. Let's just simplify this. leave our navigation there and let's just add, we changed it, right? We can now see that that change has happened because it's happening in a natural way. So this is a great way to say, oh, it's now working exactly the way we want, but it actually isn't. Let's look at our films page, which continues to work, but what if we refresh it? Uh-oh, something's gone wrong, there's no, slash films. And there's a couple of things going on here. First, when we go to our film list page, you can't quite see it here, but it says film list because that's the name of the view. But because we're using history-based navigation or routing inside the view project, 
when I click home, it's taking me to the root, but of course it isn't actually happening on the server, it's happening on the client. So it thinks we're at the home of the page. So this one and this one look like they're going to the same place, but they super aren't. And then films is going to, again, this part of the route is specifically from the routing mechanism in view. And so we need to do a couple things to make this work in the way we actually want it. First of all, let's go back to Vt. We're gonna to wanna to add a base. Base is going to be the base for this view component. And so because we're gonna be living in the film list page, that's going to be the root. Now, how does this change all of this? When we go to our film list page, we're getting this, but now the home is gonna to continue to be this same URL and that films is going to be an addendum on it. And so all the navigation we have will be after this film list because we set it up to tell view that, that this is going to be the root of our project, right? And so that's all good, but we still have films here and we refresh, we're still getting the not found. And this is for a different reason. The different reason is when we look at program.cs, our request is coming in for film list slash films, and it's not a razor page, and it's not a and it's not an API. And so we get down through this and it's gonna say 404, it doesn't know what it is. So what we really have to do is say app map fallback, and I'm gonna say map fallback to a page because I'm using razor pages. If you're using controllers or specific files or fallback to area controller, like all that's gonna to continue to work, but I'm gonna say film list. Now, what does this actually mean? This means if an URL is hit that we're not expecting, it's gonna to try to go to this film list part of our site. But remember, this is a fallback. So if there's other URLs there, it will we'll keep the URL in the browser. It's just saying, go transfer to film list and show it. So what does this mean? Make this reapply just in case. We're back at our page. We go to home, we go to film list. When we go to films, this continues to work. But if we refresh, what happens? Well, the refresh, normally wouldn't know about film. So it's just redirecting us to the same page because view routing is expecting that whatever is after this film list is going to be routing within the spa. It just does the right thing. So we now have URLs that will go directly there. And so there's a few different moving pieces here. I hope I've made them clear enough, but we can see that it can certainly work this way. In the show notes, I'll put a link to this little project so you can see how it all works together and grab the example if you want. I also wanted to talk about a class I'm giving in Atlanta. I'll probably be giving it later in the year across the country. And this is where I'm going to be teaching how to build ASP.NET projects from the ground up. It's going to include things like Tailwind. It's going to include Vue and some basics of building APIs and even securing those APIs. You can see a link here to the outline of the course. We should be re opening registrations pretty soon. So keep that penciled into your calendar if you're interested in taking the course. Thanks again, this is Sean with Coding Shorts.